The term freshwater plants is challenging to define because it encompasses all plants that grow along gradients from land to complete submergence. A distinction that is blurred by variations in water level. Freshwater plants include green macroalgae, caryophytes, hornworts, liverworts, mosses, lycopods, and ferns, as well as flowering plants that rely on standing or flowing water to complete their life cycle. The different life forms include emergent, amphibious, free-floating, and submerged plants. All freshwater plants, apart from the caryophytes, have evolved from terrestrial ancestors and include around 5,000 species spread over more than 800 genera and 200 families. Leaves of freshwater plants include the smallest and largest of all plant leaves. Many contain large volumes of air spaces that produce buoyancy and allow inorganic carbon recycling, as well as transfers of oxygen from the atmosphere to roots, and gases such as methane from sediments to the atmosphere via the roots and leaves. Many water plants reproduce by fragmentation. While some perennial species produce vegetated buds, called turians, which function as overwintering organs and propagules of dispersal. Light availability usually determines the depth limit for submerged plants in the littoral zone. Plants acclimate to light availability by altering their physiology, leaf anatomy, and shoot morphology. Growth and productivity change through time. In temperate regions, freshwater plants initiate growth once water temperatures reach about 10 degrees Celsius. They attain peak biomass in late summer and are killed when temperatures fall below 3 degrees Celsius. Plant dry weight is composed of 35 to 50 percent carbon, but carbon supply can be restricted by low rates of diffusion, which means that high carbon dioxide concentrations are required to saturate photosynthesis. Freshwater plants meet these high carbon needs by growing in habitats where carbon dioxide is high, exploiting carbon dioxide in the air via aerial leaves or the sediment via lacunae that extend from roots to shoots, as well as active carbon dioxide concentrating mechanisms using bicarbonate as the inorganic carbon source. Freshwater plants are integral to the structure and function of littoral zones and shallow lakes. They produce structural complexity and provide refuges and surfaces for colonization. They alter physical and chemical conditions in the water and sediment and supply energy and nutrients to the food web. Importantly, several freshwater plants are cultivated for human use. And of these, rice is the most important species, as a food staple of more than half of the world's population. Because of their high productivity, broad ecological tolerances, and easily dispersed propagules, several freshwater plant species are now considered the world's worst invasive weeds. With some species such as Acornia smothering lakes, and others choking rivers and drainage systems. Control of aquatic invasive weeds is costly and may involve harvesting, introduction of biological control agents, use of herbicides, and habitat manipulation. Dr. Clive Howard Williams is a specialist in water plant ecology and has conducted studies on lake and wetland ecosystems in many parts of the world. Much of his research has been on lakes in New Zealand. 
In our deep clear lakes, such as here in Lake Wanaka, native species of water plants can grow to great depths. Chiracean meadows often extend to 30 meters. And in some lakes, beds of aquatic bryophytes are found at depths of 70 meters. Swimming over the littoral zone in our lakes reveals lush and diverse macrophyte communities. But these native plant communities are under considerable threat from submerged invasive aquatic weeds. Most of these invasive species are rooted in the sediments and can extend up to five meters through the water column. Which led us to ask the question, how important are roots versus shoots for nutrient uptake? In some of our early work on this question, we conducted a transplant experiment where we took oxygen weeds from oligotrophic Lake Topol as shown here, and planted them back in the lake, but using two types of sediments. Sediments from the same lake, oligotrophic Lake Topol, and sediments from nearby eutrophic Lake Rotorua. The plants grown in eutrophic sediments grew much faster than those in the oligotrophic sediments. These results highlighted the importance of roots for nutrient uptake by water plants, and the capacity for them to proliferate through their access to sediment nutrients. This also means they can mobilize and release sediment nutrients back into the water column when they die and decompose. Freshwater plants are directly affected by a change in climate, for example, by increases in temperature, changes in precipitation, and shifts in the hydrological cycle. Evidence from multiple sources, including long-term records, comparisons among regions, and bioclimatic models, point to changes in the abundance, composition, and distribution of freshwater plant communities in response to climate change. The restoration of freshwater vegetation has focused on reversing eutrophication, especially by reductions in external nutrient inputs. Although these efforts can be successful, recovery can take many years to achieve. In this shallow lake in the Netherlands, the carophytes rapidly disappeared with an increase in phosphorus loading in the late 1960s and 70s. With the subsequent reduction in phosphorus loading, there was a delayed response and the eventual return of the carophytes in the 90s. The many threats to freshwater plants, including climate change, habitat degradation, and chemical pollutants, are leading to the loss of native freshwater plant communities. Many freshwater and wetland plant species are becoming extinct, vulnerable, or endangered. The loss of these plants affects ecosystem processes, functions, and biodiversity, as well as the ecosystem services that they provide. This highlights the urgency and the importance of aquatic conservation measures. <laughs>